Hey love, hey love, hey love. Fabulous and phenomenal Friday to you, October 29th, 2021. I'm JC Love, also known as Teacher Love, Coach Love. This is a Save Our Marriage Empowerment segment. Some of the ways we do that is with prayer, reflection, inspiration, courageous conversation, encouragement, enlightenment, evolvement. Not for everybody, and neither is marriage. I understand that, comprehend it very well. I appreciate that you gift me with some of your time as I gift you with some of mine. Look here. Oh gosh. Now I had no intentions of doing this for real, for real. However, as I say, a lot of people say take the L. There's a lesson in everything. We learn, we love, we grow. Yesterday, I actually forgot what the day was, and I was supposed to go on a trip with someone. It was going to be a distance. And by the time they got to me, I was like, for what? Go where? No. I'm doing something. It wasn't until later on that night I realized, oh, snap. It's Thursday. Somebody that's retired, as I call refocus, we lose track of days. <sighs> anyway. I decided to put my sapphire and diamond white gold ring on my thumb last night. As you know, I have my other diamond on my other thumb that goes with my birthday set that I bought seven years ago, eight years ago, eight years ago. Woo! Anyway, last night I forgot to take it off. Woke up around 1 a.m. And that's not usual for me. Didn't catch it. It's like, okay, go to the restroom, lay myself back down. You know, four o'clock, gonna come real quick. Four o'clock came, I didn't feel like getting up. Y'all, can y'all kind of feel where I'm going with this? Yeah, a couple hours later, I wake up and my thumb is swollen. My ring is stuck. And flesh side said panic. Flesh side said you brought this on yourself. Spirit side said I gave you several warnings. I woke you up a couple of times. You didn't heed it. First of all, you knew not to put that on your thumb. Mm -hmm. You knew not to. You did it anyway. You knew that wasn't good. You did it anyway. So then I was like, Lord, help me. God, help me get this off. I started maneuvering it, trying to get it off. And my thumb swelled more, started turning colors on me. Flesh said, oh, we, you're going to have to go to the ER and they're going to cut it off. You're just going to lose your ring. Spirit said, God, please help me get this off and I will never do that again. I will never, ever do that again. I won't put that on that finger ever again. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That just will be one finger that never gets a ring on it. Whatever. Spirit said, look up ways to get a ring off your finger. So I found two. And one of them was some floss. So I got some floss. I barely got the floss underneath the ring to get behind it. To be able to wrap it and then try to pull. That didn't work. So I went for some help. Hey, do you have some ribbon here? Is there some ribbon? Ribbon like what? To wrap? I don't keep ribbon. Mm. Okay. You want to go to the ER is what my flesh said. Mm. Then I was like, okay, there's a store not too far within two minutes. Can you drop me off up there on your way to where you got to go? Why you got to go there? Uh, I need to get some ribbon. I didn't tell them about my ring being on my finger until we got to the store. And I was like, why are you getting ribbon? What you about to wrap? My finger. My ring is swollen on my finger. 
it's swollen. It won't come off. Either that or I'm going to have to go to the ER. Whoa. Yeah. Now, I could have used their strength to help pull it. I decided not to. You know. So I went and got ribbon and started pulling. I already did the whole oil. I did the water, saliva, put my finger in the ice to try to get the swelling down. That wasn't working, okay? <laughs> you know, you look for different ways to figure out how to get out of a situation that you put yourself in. Now you could take an L or you can get a lesson from it. I didn't curse myself at all. Just continuously thinking about how to get out of that predicament before I had to go to the ER. God, please help me figure this out. So I tied and I got blue ribbon because it was like, you know, Sapphire, get the blue. I saw the pink. I saw some that had love on it. And I was like, nope, this ain't about love right now. This is determination. And I don't want to buy this little ribbon when I can get more yardage with the blue that's available. I said all that to say, distance, determination, prayer, maneuvering, listening, because then my spirit was like, get a knife, get some scissors. And I started using the knife to also push the ring because we don't intentionally hurt ourselves. The pain is great. There has to be something to override that. So I had to get the knife to be able to put it somewhere to push against the ring, regardless of the pain. And yes, it was painful. Some skin was lost. Mm -hmm. There was a lesson in all of it. I did not give up. I almost pushed the ring back down when it got real close to the knuckle. Cause I was like, you know what? Let's just go ahead and go to the ER. Cause this isn't, it's not going to help. And I'm alone now. <laughs> they going to work. <laughs> oh Lord. And I was like, God, just tell me how to get this off. Show me. And what came to mind was just like in marriage and just like with ourselves, there was going to be some painful moments. You may even lose some skin. It's better to lose some skin than to lose the entire finger. It's better to work through it than to throw it all out the way. You cause harm to yourself. It's not the kind of harm that is detrimental to someone else. However, if you lose your thumb, then that means that you will need more assistance because a lot of us don't realize how much work our thumb does. All of the phalanges, the fingers, the thumb, they work together, okay? I don't know if you see it, but my thumb is swollen still and it hurts to bend and I lost some skin but I got it off. My hand swelled so much, I had to take my birthday ring off as well. Yeah, you can even see where it started swelling. I would let the only finger be up, but then it looked like I'm flipping you off. But that finger started swelling around that ring as well. So it's swollen, you know, it hurts. That's about as far as I'm gonna get right now. There's a lesson in everything. Marriage isn't easy. You want to work with it, work together to get through whatever it is that you need to get through without causing harm. I caused that to myself and I had the warning beforehand and I didn't heed it. That was my fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I learned, Woo. even picking up this book and touching it, it's painful. I'm not gonna forget it though. All right. It took somebody else helping me to get where I needed to get in order to get this ribbon, to get this ring off of my thumb. Yeah, it's long. Cause I was wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and continuously pulling 
putting it in my teeth, doing whatever it was I could, oil, everything. I didn't give up though. The same with healthy marriages. Something may come to disrupt what's going on. And then you got to look and see how can we get this together as long as it's not damaging to the point where we can't fix it and heal it. All right. Today is day number 301. This is, I'm doing five of them today because I forgot to do the prayer. Ooh. Okay, let's hold with the index. <laughs> I didn't cry, I didn't curse. I sure felt like it though. <sighs> Day 301 says, love brings oneness. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Colossians 3, 15. It's time to let love change your thinking. It's time to realize that your sp <laughs> Did I do this yesterday? <laughs> it's time to realize that your spouse is as much a part of your of you as your hand, your eye, and your heart. I did do this one yesterday. They too need to be loved and cherished. Who knew that I was going to get a lesson in that today? Let's go to 302, shall we? As I say, this is an assignment and not about perfection. Mm, mm, mm. Love continues to honor. Honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus 20, 12. Even though a wife and a husband are out from under their obligation to obey their parents' commands, the Bible gives clear instruction that honoring one's parents is a lifelong duty. Mm -hmm. Honor and respect doesn't mean you have to be in contact with them if they're toxic. And if they mean you no good, that is not what this is saying at all. We have to realize when we got to love from a distance and just step back. Be free and generous with your expressions of thanks towards your mom and your dad. Give weight to their advice and counsel when it is appropriate and conducive. Respect their judgment. Don't rashly ignore what they have to say. Listen. Learn. Especially if they're willing to talk to you. A lot of our parents ain't even willing to let us know what they've done in their past that has impacted our present and could possibly influence our future. They don't realize that the seeds that they sowed, somebody has to reap them. A lot of people call them generational curses. It's a pattern. I ask questions because I want to know. You can't tell me that one did wrong and you did nothing. Mm-mm. 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 That's like me saying, or my thumb saying, you know what, I didn't do nothing to you. Why you do that to me? My thumb didn't. It just was there. And I'm the one. That caused the pain. So now it's giving me pain back. Like you did that. That was your fault. Don't get mad because I'm hurting. Leave me alone now. Go and figure out how you're going to do what you need to do with everybody else. I need to rest. But look at who caused the pain first. Me. And not listening to my spirit. Yeah. Communicate with your parents about the things or situations that have happened in your life, knowing that many of the blessings you enjoy are a derivative of their investment in you. And sometimes the pain that we endure is a derivative of what they've planted. Mm. Some call it adverse childhood trauma. We have to look at all of that. All of it. As you age and as they age, commit to caring for them in any way possible. Especially if they will allow you. Okay? Oh, even if it becomes inconvenient. Even if it becomes sacrificial. It's true that some parents have been and perhaps continue to be cold, harsh, and uncivil. 
towards you. My goodness. And even though you cannot honor their attitudes and actions, your choice to live an exemplary, godly life will be a testament of gratitude to them for giving you birth. They are the vessel that our creator used to get you here. Sometimes, oftentimes, quite a few of our parents, that's pretty much all that it is. That's why we have to be real wise and cognizant of who it is that we join. Because some, you got to be a heartless person to walk away from your child. Gotta be. And parenthood is not until 18 or 21 or 25. It's for life. And even after, there's a scripture that says that a good, wise, righteous man, woman, leaves an inheritance for the children's children, children. Woo! Uh-huh. A wise son brings joy to his father, Proverbs 10.1. The greatest honor anyone can give their parents is the honor of a life well lived. If possible, invite either of your parents or an older godly couple out on a double date with you. I don't know if I've ever done that. I've done it. Use the treasure hunters list of questions in the appendix to learn from their life experience. I gave that to you last year around December where I went through all of those. If you've never done that, do it. To sit and listen to some of the elders to find out how, you know, they were married or have been married over 40 years, no infidelity. Mm -hmm. How their teammates, they're not some of those that are, oh, we're celebrating 40 years, but in year three, I committed adultery. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's so beautiful. I know this isn't one of the normal Save Our Marriage Empowerment segments. It's an assignment. I had a lesson that needs to be talked about. And I got it out. <laughs> I appreciate your time. Thank you for gifting it to me. And yes, I could be on all three devices. I don't want to be. I just, I don't want to right now. Maybe next week. All right. So this will be uploaded to YouTube. And yeah, I'll go ahead. Hey, Facebook, you can have this one too. This is episode number 231 of the 365. I did day number 302. And I actually wrote 302 on here and didn't even look at it. I appreciate your time. Thank you for gifting me with it. Making a lovely day, not just for you. Find someone else and help them have a lovely day to do everything in love and with love as much as possible. And what lies within you. Walk in love, talk in love, look in love, speak in love. Lead in love and with love. Follow in love and with love. Be love. Give it to self and then give it to someone else, all right? I'll be back with number two.